Well, behind me here is something truly exceptional. Now, back in 1966, at a cost of 740 million CNY, this is a gigantic sum of money to be spent. Behind me here is a decommissioned, that's right, a decommissioned underground nuclear project. Now, it started in 1966. It began as an 18-year process. The total construction area is 104,000 square meters, and in total, 20 kilometers. Now, why was this built? As we can see, if we go back in history, we know that one of the first nuclear bombs was used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. This sent shockwaves throughout the world. And yes, China had to do something to protect itself. I have to tell you the gigantic size and the feeling of this on what was happening in that era of time is very important to what we're dealing with in the normal geopolitical events that are going on with us today. There's only been one country that's ever used a nuclear weapon, and that's the United States of America. I hope it never happens again. But today, I wanna to take you into what was one of the largest infrastructure projects in the world, and of course, in the history of China. Come join me. So I'm at Diversion 9 Tunnel here. This is three kilometers in length. It's the main power supply system for the entire project. Now it's important, they're using a lot of the water that's being pumped in here for the cooling system of the third loop of the reactor, which was potentially supposed to have plutonium-239. So now I've come up to the control room. Wow, I gotta tell you that this is remarkable. We have to imagine for a moment what was going on in this room in the 1960s, 1970s, early 80s. Can you imagine the feeling that was going on in these rooms as the country was preparing itself to protect itself, preparing itself to potentially war? It's really hard to fathom this because I sit in this room here today and I'm looking around and yes, I understand it's a decommissioned project, but the size of this project, just to give you an example, the underground nuclear reactor hall was the world's largest artificial cave, 21 kilometers in length and 80 meters in height. It's equivalent, get ready for this, a 20 story building. And it's known as the world's first artificial cave so far making it absolutely I would say an absolute stunning project. Now, the nuclear instruments in this room, thank God, <laughs> were never used. And you can see that's why they're not complete. They're made of imported stainless steel. So however, this project was canceled in, I believe it was 1981, 82. It was then officially terminated around 1984. Can you imagine the readiness that was going on in the late 60s, the 70s, and as we push into the 80s for China to protect itself. Well, I mean, by the time the plant uh, was dissolved, we'll say in 82, 84, um, or terminated, we'll say, a couple of years later, it was turned into a fertilizer factory uh, almost 30 years ago. Now, in addition for the combat readiness, the tunnel engineering design can prevent the explosion impact of one million tons of TNT equivalent bombs and it's reinforced concrete. Oh wow. It can resist the damage caused by an M8 earthquake. 
being in a place like this, you can't fathom how big it is and how important it is. But have a look at this, guys. I've got a laser in my hand here. The height. Now, this is where the fuel rods go into the reactor next door here. And they would bring the trucks down. You can see how far that laser is going. Now, there's something on the wall here that I want to show you guys. In Chinese, it means learning and producing. Conquer all the difficulties, then the enemy will be afraid of us. Those words, back in that time, is really something that you can try to understand what this country was going through. I'm kind of speechless here, but there's where the fuel rods would have gone in there to produce the plutonium-239. And look at the size of this place, guys. It's unbelievable. I just have no words. And now we look at this place as somewhere that we can come and visit to try to learn and understand what happened. And I'm rather glad that the Chinese have opened up a place like this to educate generations of what can happen when our world gets really out of control. I'm standing here in 2022. There's other nations in this world that are in heavy conflicts. There's a lot of words that are being thrown around in media outlets around the world. Will this nation use this? Will this nation use that? I don't need to get into specifics. Well, I have to say this concludes part of this amazing tour inside 816. You can see it on the wall in the distance. This is where all the waste goes. I'm not claiming to be an expert in this area, but I can tell you the size of this project is massive. One of the biggest, I guess, mega projects that I've ever covered in China that wasn't a railway, that wasn't buildings or anything like that. But this was, I would say, the nuclear ambitions and a very poor, important part in history in China. And I got to enjoy it today. Anyway, signing out from 816, and I think it's important to my viewers here that we go up in the air and really see how big this area was.